Le Chemin proudly sponsors On The Bank. A week ago, 167 anglers arrived here in Cornwall with one mission in mind, to pull out a peg exactly like this one. This is Peg 21 on Jenny's Lake at the fantastic Whiteacres Complex and it's here that 12 months ago Craig Edmonds won the match and took away an enormous cheque for £25,000. Today we've got 24 of simply the best match anglers in the UK who will be competing against each other to try to win that incredible prize. The funny thing is, is when you win it, it's, you, you don't actually realise until the year goes on and places you go, you fish around the country and people come up to you and congratulate you. I mean, coming back to White this year, fishing a couple of festivals and that, and you know, you, it's, it's just really nice, you know, um, people you meet because of it. Um, and you, I don't know, it just, you just kind of walk around White Acres knowing that that for the rest of your life you're going to have that title next to your name, it's a, it's a nice feeling. I think, I think it should be alright, at least the conditions we can fish this year, because last year the conditions were horrendous and no one could really fish or do that much, you could only fish short and feeders and stuff, so at least um, there'll be lots of different tactics today, but the pegging's different, it's around the lake, so we'll have to see where the, where the good areas are, but no one knows really, so it's quite a good match to look forward to. Mega lineup. everybody that you think would be in the final, I think. Um, yeah, very close again, you know, for the top 24. Loads of people going home. I think the vans and cars will be getting a bit of a booting on the way home because it's like one point, you know what I mean? And we, you know, I've been there. and But yeah, mega lineup and um, obviously back on Jenny's for the God knows how many times and hopefully try and win. I don't think I've got much of a chance, to be honest. Yeah, if you're confident, you fish well, you believe it's going to happen like yesterday. I believe that I was feeding it right and you know, you make your own look really. So I go today, different mindset, just think, right, I'm going to fish for bites. And last year I sort of went for it thinking, it's not a great area, I need to do something different. Whereas this year I'm just going to fish my peg for what it's worth. There's a grand up for play and, you know, if you get lucky, you might end up with 25, so. You know, you've got a lot of anglers that have been sort of, you haven't seen them on the leaderboard all week, like Andy Power and people, but you know he's going to be there at the end of the week because he's just so consistent. And so, same, same as all the anglers in the final, they're all they're all the best of the best, really. And um, it's going to be a tough final to win because everybody's such, you know, such good, good anglers. Well, you can see this incredible lineup just to our right, and today my co-commentator has been in that lineup, Mr. Yeah, Winkup. Nice to see you. And you, nice to see you again. Um, this is going to be a very interesting four hours ahead of us as the guys prepare for the draw. What have you seen this last week um, to sort of, you know, inform what we're going to be seeing out well, here? I think we're going to see one hell of a match. The lineup, as always, is ridiculously strong. It's just it's the best anglers you're going to see in the country. And, I've failed to make the grade again. Oh, don't say that, Winnie. So I had a <laughs> not quite made it again, but I think it's just going to be a brilliant match. Can't predict a winner or peg at the minute, so it's going to be a brilliant match. Can't wait. Looking forward to it. If you were going to be dipping your hand <clears> in that um, in that draw, because the, the pegging this year is interesting, is it? Slightly different. We're going to have four sections of six. Yeah. Uh, where would you fancy? It's, I think you're going to... The usual pegs, like where Trig Craig won it from last year, M peg 21... And the other end peg, this is 15. I think if I was going to pick one peg out of all, I would say 15. So it's a brilliant area anyway, and it's an M peg this year. So I'll stick my neck out. I'm going to say peg 15. We'll hold you to that, Winnie. Yeah. So there we are. Draw is just about to happen. So that's coming next. So, Winnie. Here we go. Well, Winnie, this bloke has had 
an incredible day yesterday. You were telling me last night when we were chatting in the bar what happened to Andy. Yeah. And I mean, what, A, he's a phenomenal angler, but B, didn't he do well yesterday? Oh, it was ridiculous. I was near him yesterday, two oh, pegs away. Oh, it was all nice peg. I was two pegs away from yesterday. He's had a foul up, six pound carp, netted it 10 minutes after the whistle, won the festival, or won the section by three pound, won him the festival. Unbelievable day, brilliant. And there we see Paul Holland, who's second up, finished second in the, in the festival over at... Yep. I, I see every time I come to White because I see Paul Holland drawing his pegs for the final. And another one in the shape of this fella. Yeah, it's the same face as every year, and he, you, you'll see this is a top three again. And they were the top two last week, Paul and Andy, top two, two festivals on the top. And Des is always there, isn't he? Every and the, the rest of the guys will be fascinated to see what he draws. 44. What's that like? 44, that is... Ooh. That's one peg away from where he was last year. I'm just looking at the board. He's 43 last year, and they said he had a chance last year. So I won't be too disappointed with 44. Brother from another mother, yeah, John yeah. Harvey, Johnny another Harvey. fantastic. Um, I will tell you what's interesting. John is very good on um, venues with natural baits coming to their own. It, oh. oh, he's pulled out another one. 15. That is, like I said earlier, that is the peg. Oh, I'm well. predicting that peg. That is, I think, probably going to be the peg. Phenomenal draw. Mikey and uh, John together there, slapping each other on the back. Look at this, the banter, there. fantastic <laughs> stuff. Now, another England international, Callum Dix. Um, yep. He's been, I have to say, the bridesmaid in this final a couple of times. Uh, yeah. And I know how much it would mean to him to, to win it. He's given up his, his England career at the moment to concentrate once again on, on fishing these commercials. Another phenomenal competitor. No, oh, it's unbelievable. Callum's brilliant. He's like I say he's given up the England side to concentrate and he's, he's already back in finals already so he's on the way. We can't come into one of these big finals without this bloke who's he's drawing now there, can we? Oh, oh not again. <laughs> you are joking. Andy Power Peg 16. I think they should name that Andy Power Peg 16. That's incredible. <laughs> he was close last year. I think he missed out by two pound last year and he's gone and drawn Peg can 16. Can you believe that? That's unbelievable. Well, that's enough time for talking. Just the bad news. The drizzle has just started, but Clint, take it away. I'm going to start them off. All in! Four hours. One of the best matches in the country is underway. Well, Winnie, we're underway uh, looking over the lake on peg 15 as Andy Power takes a little sip of drink. Yeah. It's extraordinary that he should draw in that area again because... This area has almost become his own. I mean, he's fished in that on that peg a couple of times already. Yeah. Um, by his own admission this morning, has actually had bad matches on a couple of them and has learned an awful lot from it. What's your feeling about looking at this lake today and where this match is going to go? I think, like we always say, the, these pegs we're looking at, 15 to 20 it is. I'll be surprised if they don't start catching fish soon. And I think last year, the, the other end weren't very good at all. You could almost write them off after two hours. And immediately to his left, we've got John Harvey. You know, we've got, I think the pegging in this match is fascinating. The way that it's been split into essentially six sections. So uh, each of the sections has got four anglers in it. And those anglers are fishing for a £1,000 in that split section. Yeah. And then obviously the one who wins the match wins the, the £25,000 first prize. It keeps you going all the way to the end, doesn't it? Oh, definitely. It's a brilliant idea. When we used to fish just for a winner takes all, Two hours into the match, you could be out of it, and then you're ready to go home, basically. But you're fishing for a grand, a grand's a grand, and it's a, it's a lovely lovely amount of money to win. Beat three anglers, you win a thousand pound. Brilliant idea. Do you know the other thing that I find fascinating with this today is that before the start of the match, we ummed and ahed about where we were going to start doing the commentary. We looked up and down. There were probably half a dozen places we could have stood and done this. We've picked this one because of the form of the area, but I've got a feeling... No, nobody in the match knows what's going to happen, let alone us. No, I don't think we do. Well, I say because it's pegged on both banks, that changes the match completely. Normally you just focus on four or five pegs and that'll be it. But with this half, especially this bit here, you're opposite like the usual flyers. So these could easily win the match. They could chuck up here easily. Well, John, we're seeing a few signs and right in front of us on peg 36, there's Alan Scott Horn just shipping back. Looks like a silverfish. There's some interesting stuff happening already. It's literally just happened in the last five minutes. We've seen, I don't know, five or six fish caught. Nothing for the first ten minutes. 
Callum's got one on there. That looks like a good fish. Yeah. Alan's just netted one. Literally, it's, <laughs> the lake's just woken up in the last five minutes. Now, it's interesting looking at Callum because when he drew, several people just said to him, Callum, get in the van, go home. What a waste of time. But when I came down, I had a little chat with him before and he said he really fancied it. You know, he was plumbing up and he said he hit five fish while he was plumbing his peg. There's always a nice sign, that, isn't it? You can't get your plumbing because there's too many fish in the way. It's not, not a bad problem to have. And so draw, sort of draws you. Yeah, you used to get, yeah. <laughs> That's like a good fish. That, it does, it? doesn't it? And, you know, he's got elastic coming out the end, the end of his pole. We've seen a couple of silverfish caught already. Um, we've seen Paul Holland on the end catch a small fish. We've seen Andy Geldart catch a fish. We've seen um, a couple of floats going under. But that's the first sign of a carp I've seen up this end. It is, yeah. I've just, I think Paul Holland just had a small fish that, uh, that's Richie. I just seen you know, that. Richie had one a, a minute ago, three or four pound. But this is a first proper fish, I think. The, o- the other rumour that's sort of coming down the bank is that uh, Andy Bennett, who is uh, up the other end of the lake, has already had two carp. Oh no, he can't do it, can he? He's just won back to back festivals down here, which is ridiculous. If he wins this today, I think the rest of us might all give up fishing. That's it, we're all done. <laughs> well, John, what we've been waiting to happen seems to be happening because if you look at John Harvey shipping his pole back inch by inch very carefully, his float's just gone under. It looked to me like he was fishing worm shallow or something like that. I think he I just took me off him for a bit. I don't know if he's shallow or on the bottom now. He'll have a rig for shallow and a rig for on the bottom on the same line. Ooh, he's oh, lost he's it. lost, he's lost it. it. He's on the bottom. I just see the length of his rig. That was a good fish, that was. He's on the bottom now. Yeah, I can see it. We've seen a few fish lost, haven't we, already yeah. down here? What's going on? I don't know. <laughs> Nerves. All a bit nervous. What, the fish or the <laughs> anglers? Both, I think. <laughs> I'll tell you what is interesting. Um, Alan Scotthorn, we've seen land a couple of fish. Um, one of them was a, a little tiny stocky carp, about pound, pound and a half. And I've just heard on the grapevine that um, they actually stocked on Tuesday, so four or five days ago, 1,500 small stocky carp into Jenny's Lake. That could be a real game changer. Definitely, yeah. It's- we kept hearing rumours through the week that they'd, they'd put some in, and no one really knew it. So, is it a rumour? We don't know. And we we didn't even, couldn't even see what fish it was. And Alan just said he's had a, a three little one pound fish, and they're, they're brand new fish. You get sat on a little nest of them, they'll stay in your peg all day. Le Chemin proudly sponsors On The Bank. Well, Winnie, we've moved down behind the legend that is now Andy Bennett, and the news is that he's already had several fish. It's ridiculous. He can't, I said, he can't do it, can he, surely? He's basically just winning everything at the minute. And he's, apparently he's got 22, 23 pound. And this is the end that no one wanted to be here. He, he drew, I think, he was on the exact peg as last year. He didn't want to be up here, but it's happening. <laughs> Uh, yeah, as you say, nobody wanted peg 46. I'll tell you what else nobody wanted, uh, which was the peg a couple to Andy's left, which is where Des' ship is. Um, Des apparently has already had three carp, one of them potentially a double-figure fish, so he's going to be heading towards sort of 15, maybe even 20 pounds. It's brilliant. It's, I'll say it's the end no one wanted, and at the minute this is a place to be. I think, I think Andy's fishing pellets, but he's just had a little fish in and just tapping a few pellets in. Like I say, if he goes and wins this after winning back-to-back festivals, it's ridiculous. What an angler. We can see there's ship reaching for the landing there, and that's not a good sign if you're fishing against him, is it? No, it's, a, it's like a little a small fish. I think a lot of the fish are these new fish, these new stocky fish. No, you never want to see Des's landing that going in and out too often. Not a good sign. We've stationed ourselves behind Andy Bennett, and since we've been here, um, so we're now about 45, 50 minutes into the match, he's not actually had a fish for 15 or 20 minutes, which is a little bit of a worry for him. He had such a good start, um, but we've not seen him catch anything. No, it is worrying. The rumours were coming up the bank, he's had two or three early carp short, and I think it's gone long while I was here. He had two or three small fish, and he had a quick look shallow, and that didn't work, so he's, that's gone, he's got that out of his head. He's just come back on the deck and this float's not gone under that. I would be getting a little bit worried if I was him because I'll say it's not the best end of the lake and you might sort of run out of fish if you like. They might just catch what's there and then that's your lot sort of thing. But 
And that's that gamble, I suppose, if you go short early. You know, if you've got a little pod of fish almost under your feet, five or six metres in front of you, once you've caught them, you know, they're not going to come back, are they? No, that's like, so you resident fish, if you like, you've caught them, and then that's it, it's like, what's left? And so he's gone about 10 minutes now, and nothing, no activity. I don't know, it'd be interesting to see what happens. If he stop, if you don't have a fish in the next 10 or 15 minutes, I'd be getting worried if I was him. And Des Ship has just struck into another fish. It looks like, again, he's fishing uh, a feeder out to that green aerator, which is about, I suppose, 35, 40 metres in front of him. Um, that do, again, doesn't look very big, but we know that Des has already got one decent-sized carp in his net. He's lethal when he's got momentum, isn't he? He is, yeah, he's fishing, he's trying to work out, I think he's dead opposite peg eight, I think, and that's or eight or seven, yeah, and he's, that's where them ball of Carassios often lives, and I think that's what he's catching. If you if you get on a, a nice little ball of them, they seem to live around them air rates. they live in the deep water, they don't like the shallow uh, pegs on the islands, they want to be in the deep water, and he catches them all day, about pound each, pound that is. Yeah, I might be thinking you might be a bit generous to give that one a pound, yeah. but the thing yeah. is... His rig was in the water for 35 seconds before he was winding his second fishing in. So, like you say, momentum, it keeps winding them in. Yeah. Obviously, I don't think, not sure anyone's actually ever won a match doing that. I remember Paul Yates coming second doing it once. He had something like 80 fish for £80. There were like peas in a pod. I don't know if anyone's actually won one. It's normally you need carp, but I just don't know. It's so hard to predict what's going to win. It's, just keep putting fish in your net. That's all you can do. Well, let's just watch Des for a second then. Um, so he's just can't recast. So he's landed that fish, he's recast. Um, he's about three metres off the aerator, which is probably not directly in front of him, so he can't cast straight at it. And that's one of those kind of holding spots. The fish will sit under the aerator, won't they? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they love it. I don't know what it is. There must be some up there, but they just it's probably three or four foot deep there. And they just like being there. That's where they feel comfortable. So just keep catching them all day. He'll be, he'll be happy. He's just fed his pole line, so while he's watching his tip, um, he's multitasking and, and feeding his pole line. Um, so just watch for a second and see if he strikes into another fish. So if there's actually a, a decent number of those Carasio out there, or little carp, um, we'll see if his tip goes around and he's into another one. Or in the meantime, the wind's just got up a wee bit. We've got a little bit of ripple on the surface, which is always a good sign on these big commercials because the, once the water starts moving around, it tends to push, push the fish around a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's a bit chilly wind now. It's like, yeah, there's an edge to it, isn't it? Let's talk about the wind. and You want to be the right side of it. And when oh, it's cold... There's in again, look. There he is. One, yeah, that's, and Carassia. I think they're Carassia. all these new stocky fish. But you'll get a bite really quick, and that's less than a minute. If he can carry on doing that, he'll have a proper weight. One of the interesting... So I can remember a few years ago when Andy Geldart won this match, um, fishing actually down at this end, and he was talking about how difficult it is to play the Carasio because they've got such hard, bony little mouths, and you mustn't stop winding. He said if you yeah. stop winding, they just come off because, of course, the, all the guys are using barbless hooks. Uh, it's just kind of getting that fish to continue coming towards you and you daren't stop winding. You see Des grabs his landing net once again. They're, they're funny little things. They're like pieces of steel. They're rock hard. The whole bodies and mouths, everything's just rock hard. So you, you hook them and they just ping off. Well, Winnie, at last, <laughs> another fish for Andy Bennett. Not the size of fish that maybe he wants from this peg but at least some signs that there are a few fish starting to feed. He's had a quiet half hour, hasn't he? He has. He's just had a little spell and nothing. And I've just seen fish swirl in his peg, but I don't mean like they're shallow, because his peg's so shallow anyway. They could be just good signs as fish in your peg. They could be on the bottom and you can see them because it's so shallow. But yeah, that's his first fish for a little while. He'll be happy again now. All the while, dead ship's still catching, and there are fish swirling out by the aerator. Um, I, I, at this stage, an hour and a quarter in, there's no way to call this. We're, this is going to be right down to the wire job. I mean, the, the, I'm getting the sense that we're going to get a heck of a late drama here. I think we are. This is going to be one of them matches where people are just, are just ticking away now, catch, I'd say, 30 to 40 pounds in the first three hours. And this last hour, when, the, when it comes to the last hour, this short lot, and there's only short meat line, it's going to be mega important. But Winnie, we've just wandered down to behind Jamie Wilde to have a little chat with him. He's had a couple of fish, but the first thing he said when we got here was, I'll tell you who's winning this match. 
dead ship. And if you look along the bank, there he is with his landing net in his hand again. Yeah, I think, I don't know if it's a carp or a carassio this time. Um, so yeah, another half decent. It's a lot of pound and a half each. I think they're these new carp, plus carassios, and these new carp that have gone in. They've stirred all the other fish up and... I'll say Jamie was dead right, I think. He's, he's had a fish nearly every put in since we've been here. Well, we've been standing here, what, <clears throat> 40 minutes maybe? And I reckon he's had 12, maybe 15 fish. If they're a pound and a half each, that's £30 pound plus. Right. Yeah, £25 pound plus. Jamie's just hooked that little, looks like a carp as well, that does. But yeah, definitely. I think Jamie was right. Des is winning it. I did say to Jamie um, that now we'd arrived behind his peg, it was about time he had a fish. So I'm very pleased to see that he's obliging. fantastic way you can control these fish using pole tactics you know that this it's oh Ooh, he's lost he's it again lost you it. didn't say anything oh, that I time nothing either. i said nothing that time that weren't my fault <sighs> well not pleasant to see that no, happening no one likes to see that it's the worst feeling in the world you lose a fish it's horrible there's jamie just chipping back very gently not a big fish but a good sign nonetheless that there are one or two feeding here. I, I like the way it's pegged. I know there were one or two anglers. I mean, anglers always moan about the pegging, don't they? As yeah, you well know. <laughs> but the pegging looks good to me. I think it's, you know, and it's really interesting the way it's sectioned as well. So all the anglers are fishing essentially against three others in their subsection for a thousand quid. It's not bad, That's is it? awesome, isn't it? It's not a bad day at the office, is it? You beat three anglers and win a grand. That's brilliant, isn't it? I want to do that every match. Yeah, the way it's pegged, it, at the minute, the pegs nobody wanted. These are the pegs where potentially got first and second in the match, I reckon, maybe even third. And then no one wanted to draw here. Yeah. It's unbelievable, really. And is that bit simply because it's the shallower side of, of Jenny's? Is that is that the, the thinking? Is yeah, it I think it's, so. It's shallower side. And last year they pegged it for the first time in a few years, and it, it was the worst bit. But fish move, don't they? Fish have got fins, they swim about. and They're here, these fish are here. So the peg that Des is on is close to the area where I know the match has been won previously. So before they changed the pegging, it was the entire opposite bank to where we're standing that was, was pegged. Yeah. Um, and that was the case for probably 10 years. But it did used to be pegged all the way around as it is now. And where Des is and along that little bank, I know Grant Albert and also Adam Wakelin won the match from the peg immediately to Des's left-hand side in you know consecutive years. So there is a bit of a track record and like you were saying, it's that, around the aerator, off the back of that island, there's a little deep spot, isn't there? And the yeah. fish seem to, like, just sitting there. Definitely, there is. There's a little deep spot. And like I say, it's been won there twice in the past. And it's just unknown here at the minute. Nobody seems to know, like, if you draw here and the fish are here. I was saying about the wind earlier, about being out of the wind. You, you look at the lake now, and this is nice and calm. And on the other side, where they're not catching a lot, it's got the ripple... Well, we say you want the ripple normally, but you don't when it's cold. It's the opposite. You want to be this side of the wind. I think that's got a bit to do with it as well. This is probably the warmest bit of the lake, this. And that's where the fish want to be. Interesting signs as this match starts to progress. A little bit of room. Des is still catching fish over to our left, but it doesn't take long for one of those big ones like Andy's just landed to cancel out an awful lot of work catching small carasio and little tiny stocky carp. That's probably seven or eight pounds. So that's worth seven of Des's fish, maybe a couple more. In fact, that might even be a double figure carp safely in the keep net. But he does need to get a good little run of those together to try to, to make a way. Le Chemin proudly sponsors On The Bank. Well, people, welcome back to the show. We've reached, we reckon, what is probably the halfway point of the match. We're two hours in. We're just behind peg 44, where Des Ship is still catching fish. But, Winnie, there are a few interesting things happening in this match, aren't there? Well, there is. It's all starting to change at the minute. It's Des has caught steady all day, I think, and I think he's the leader at the minute. And he's just dropped on his short line. He's, he actually lost it, but it was a big fish. There's one or two big fish. Andrew Crock on the other side, he's just had two for £20. And that's when it can change in an instant. You get three or four of them, suddenly they're in the lead. They're beating Des and 
it's close at the minute. It's, can't call it at the minute. The other thing, um, so when we started the match, we were looking at the top end and, and the area where Andy Power and John Harvey are. Um, there are signs that further up, certainly around the area that Andy Geldart's fishing, your mate Phil Canning's starting to catch. Yeah. And I've also heard that James Dent has had one or two fish. Yeah, they, his name keeps getting mentioned on the bank. Phil Canning's catching his coassios. I think the same as what Des is catching, but they look bigger. They're like pound, pound and a half things. They're like lead, really. They're like solid little things. I think he's, that's what he's catching. He's been on them for about an hour, they're saying. You get one of them a bung, you catch 20, 30 pound an hour, if not more. So heavy little fish. So let's have a little wander down and see what's going on down there. I've got a sense, though, people, what's going to happen here is that we're going to get to sort of the last 40 minutes or so, and people like Andy Bennett, who's already back on his short line, might start picking up one or two big fish. So we could get a situation where we're going to have probably half a dozen people, maybe, in contention to win this £25,000 first prize. Amazing match. Well, something interesting happening at the top end as you see Phil Canning just slipping the landing net under a fish. So where Des Ship up at the bottom end is, uh, is catching steadily, we understand that Phil Canning is catching just as quickly, using pole tactics where Des is fishing a feeder. And you can see that Phil has got the end of his pole tip painted white, so probably fishing shallow. John Winkup has joined me again. Winnie, we've just seen Phil land another fish. Um, there are signs here that it might just be starting to, to take off at this end of the lake as well. This is going to be impossible to call, isn't it? It is. I can't call it at the minute. If Phil's been catching for an hour, they say, maybe even longer. He's getting one a bung, so I'm just, I'm just, just looking at him now and see how quick he is catching. But He's clearly fishing shallow, though, isn't yeah. he? With his, you know, the white painted tip on his pole and... Flipping his rig over the top like that. Yep, just whirling it around. And these Carasio things are about, about a pound, pound and a half up here. I think Des is a quite small, a lot of them. But if he's catching bigger fish, he could soon catch Des up. But I can't call it at the minute. Andy Bennett just had an eight pound on his short meat line. He has one or two more. He's back in the lead. So when you were approaching the last hour, uh, we are back at the, the sort of the top end of the lake. So interesting things happening we know phil canning certainly in contention we can see james dent in front of us on the peg right next door to phil who's um, leaning into one certainly some signs that the one or two of the bigger fish are starting to feed um i'm not going to ask you to give your view on who's going to win this match because i, I think it's imp impossible to call it but just give me a little flavor of of what you've seen today in terms of the tactics that have been employed by the different anglers on on this incredible venue yeah, it's really interesting actually i'm just we're talking about tactics i'm just watching phil cannon at the minute that he's been catching really well shallow rumors on the bank he's catching really well and i've just seen him go out of a little pot and now he'll be fishing on the bottom he's obviously slowed up they was all saying he's catching one of one of chuck basically so talking about tactics he's just change tactics so his shallow lines gone a bit iffy so yeah it's definitely gone slower for him but other tactics like des basically he's just fished a feeder near enough all day he's had pretty much a fisher chuck on the feeder and you got andy bennett he's pinging a few pellets long catching on the deck and he's gone on his meat short line he had a fish last time he was up there big and there's basically all sorts of tactics really and we've seen john harvey catch on paste you know it's one of those where um i think I suppose the most vital ingredient in any sort of fishing, match fishing, doesn't matter what you do, is confidence. Do what you're yeah. do what you're good at and try and make it work for you on the day, and then you can feel your way through the match. Definitely, you got to make your mind up. It's four hours long. You got to, you got to really have a fixed plan and and say, well, this is what I'm going to do. The first two hours, last hour, I'm going to do this, and really you got to stick to it because you haven't got time to keep chopping and changing. Like these anglers that fish pace, they'll probably do it and sit on it, and if it pays off you only want a few bites and then it's game on sort of thing we're heading into the last hour now and on the end peg there's mikey williams last time we saw mikey playing a carp it didn't end too well for him but it looks a little bit more promising this time he's got it under control a few signs i've just had a little chat with des ship um, who's fishing immediately to my right hand side and the news for des is not so good so since we left left him he reckons he's had seven or eight fish only. Uh, the rate he was catching, um, that's a lot slower. Bearing in mind that Phil Canning, at the other end of the fishery, 
is catching steadily. And Des has just struck into a fish, so they are still there. Mikey Williams is playing that fish quite steadily over on the other side. What's going to happen here is I get the sense that in this last hour, if a few of those big fish start feeding, there are one or two people who are nowhere in this match who might end up moving into the frame. There's a picture of concentration here right in front of us. Just taking his time, winding steadily. What must be going through his head at the moment? Lord only knows because he's completely at the mercy of whether he can keep that ball of feeding fish out in front of him and that tip keeps going round and you can see how much he's concentrating. That's another one of those decent sized little stockies are just over a pound, same sort of size that Phil Canning's catching. Whereas if you look over on the other side of the lake, in goes Mikey Williams, landing net at the ready, pole tip up in the air. This is the size of fish that Des would kill for at the moment. If he got one or two of these, he'd be right in contention. And you can see a huge splash in front of Mikey Williams. In goes the landing net and it's in. Look at the size of that. Now that, that sort of fish here in this match is a total game changer. That wipes out an hour's work from Des or from Phil Canning at the top end. And if Mikey Williams can get into a little bit of a rhythm with all that water to play with over to his left, that's a fish that's easily seven or eight pounds, possibly a little bigger. Fantastic stuff. Well, Winnie, we're at the sharp end, aren't we? Um, we've said for the last hour that it's gonna come into the last hour. We're now into it. I'm getting the sense that it might even be the last half an hour because there's some interesting stuff happening. Des has gone through a little process of changing tactics and fish the pole. Yeah. It didn't work, and I think he's cross with himself for doing it. It p potentially could come down to that. that well, he, he still might win it anyway, but if, that, if he misses out by, like, say, two or three pounds, and he's come off his main line for 15 minutes, you know, he'll be fuming. But I think he's just ahead. It's so close. It's that, that got Andy Bennett in front of us. I think he's got a little bit more than what he said he has and yes. dares and ooh, it's, it's so close, it's ridiculous. So what we've seen from Andy <clears throat> Bennett is he's such a superb judge of a match and, and the confidence that he must have. We can see that he's just flicking in little cubes of meat short um, on that five metre line where we know that he had a couple of fish early. He's then dropped back onto that line in the middle of the match and from what you heard, he picked off a couple of fish, didn't he? Well, I think he sneaked them in. A lot of people didn't see them, but I spoke to Jamie Wilde, who's next to him. Obviously, you can see, and he had three, and they weren't even mentioned. Like No one had even known he had them. That could be 15, 18 pounds, 20 pounds, could be anything. No one even knew he had them. And he's still he's saving that now. He's saving that little line as late as he can, because he wants to drop in on it. If he can go in and catch two fish on that line, I think that'll, that'll overtake Des, who's got one on now and he's just Des is just relentless fish after fish but they're small and he could have two fish for anything potentially 20 pounds so talk me through the <clears throat> the sort of the mental process here then that that gamble that you take of when you decide to press the button on that line because you know he's primed it he's fed it fantastically well Andy Bennett when do you say okay this is it is it just a gut feeling are you looking for signs what how does how do you decide when to drop that rig on that five metre line? I think it is a gut feeling, you've just got to leave it. You obviously don't want to leave it too long because you want to give yourself a chance. You might only go on it. He's probably thinking now, I want two fish. So you don't want to go on it with like an hour to go. He wants to leave it, say, half an hour. So there's one or two waiting. He might even see them because it's so shallow. He might see a few patterns of fish and it's just a gut feeling at the end of the day. You'll think, right, this is the time. The other thing that I find amazing is that Des, who's just lifted into yet another mm. fish, um, he's not. He had a, a seven pounder early on in the match. We know, but you'd think that he'd pick up one bonus big fish out there, yeah. wouldn't you? I think it's just a ball of these carassios. It's just they all live together, and I don't think many carp get a look in. They just they, I don't know if they bully the other fish out, but that's just where they live, and that's it, and nothing else is there really. And this is where the Des gets into this amazing rhythm when he's fishing well. It does the same thing over and over yeah. and over. It's, it's kind of, you know, uh, work out the right method, execute, repeat, execute, repeat. Yeah. And it's just the same. Every time you see him, he's doing the same thing. Tip goes round, winder fish in, landing net goes in, 
fish in hand, drop it in the keep net. The, the rhythm's fantastic, isn't it? Another pound, it eyes oh, awesome. It's so smooth, and like I say, it's just repeat. Just do exactly what you do every chuck. Another pound in the net. It's, that's awesome to watch. That's, that's why he's where he is. When he look, he's in. He's in. He's got on. This is actually on his longer line. He never had a fish on his short line, but it's not. I don't know actually. I think that's bigger than I thought it was. When he first looked, it didn't look very big. But this is exactly what he wanted. I want, that's about. Let's have a little look. I don't quite, that coming nice and easy for him. Oh, it's pound, big enough, five isn't it? Pound, that is. I thought that was like a two pounder. That's five pound. I reckon, that's probably just cancelled Des's last five fish out, basically. Oh. He goes in and gets another one. The thing is, that was on his long line. He just shipped out his long line. And then a fish. That, <laughs> that's exactly what he needed. He gets another one. I think he needs two, really. But Two more, you think? Two, I reckon. I mean, we've been so lucky with the weather today after the week the guys have had here at Whiteacres. We've had 10 days where it's thrown it down every single day and the rain has managed to stay off until, <laughs> well, we've got 15 minutes of the match left, John. Um, so, you, you know, we might have got away with the whole thing, but the fact that it's only just raining now, it's not going to dampen the spirits here because this has been probably one of the best fishing matches I think I've seen for a very long time. It's so close. You just... You can't call it. I can't call it. Like we keep saying, I think there's three people in it: Phil Cannon, Andy Bennett, and Des. It is so close. Des has just basically reeled in a fish nearly every chuck all day long. But Andy needs he needs two fish. I think Phil Cannon started catching again. That's, I just spotted him a little while. He had three fish on the trot. He hadn't caught anything for a little while. Ah, oh, it's ridiculously close. Can't call it. Le Chameau proudly sponsors On The Bank. Well, Winnie, we're in the last couple of minutes of this extraordinary fishing match. In the foreground in front of us is Andy Bennett, who's just shipping back with a fish on that he doesn't really want to land because it's a tiny fish, we think. The man next to him, Des Ship, has just put a fish in the keep net and he's having another cast. It could be that these two guys in front of us are first and second. We're pretty sure that Phil Canning is still in the frame. It's going to take the scales to separate whoever's won this match. This has been just so brilliant. What a great match. Oh, it's been awesome. I've loved, loved watching it. I'd, I'd, I'd rather been in it, obviously, but watching these boys, oh, it's awesome. You, you don't get a chance to watch each other, like these anglers. I don't get a chance to watch them. So when you, when you see them, you, you just realise how good like, Andy is. And that fish you just had, it was only a pound. But you don't know that we obviously wanted a bigger fish, but that pound, you know, it's so you close. So that one pound it. fish, he's just had, he, I reckon he's got time for one more drop in. If this goes under now with anything, it's so close. It's anything two minutes, happen. two minutes. He won the festival yesterday with a fish after the whistle, hooked it obviously before the whistle, landed it after, won in the festival. Can he do it again? You don't know. It's, it's interesting that the, the short line that was so productive for him in the early stages of the match, which he's fed brilliantly all the way through, um, he's basically ignored that and gone on that long line. The float's gone under again and he's just missed a bite. Mr. Well, bite. Can you believe it? He's and there goes Des lifting in and he's missed a bite as well. Oh, and there we go. That's, that's it. That's the end of it. Oh. That's the end of the match. So Clint Elliott's just called time. Can't call it. Can't call it. That's, Andy literally missed a bite then. That could have been anything. You don't know. That could have been a big fish. Des pulled in, there's no fish on the end. <laughs> That's brilliant, I can't call it. Well, we're going to have a little wander around now. So the way in, we'll start with Mikey Williams. We'll make our way all the way around the lake. Andy Bennett will be one of the last to weigh in. This has been a fantastic competition. And the only way we're going to find out who's won it is to weigh the fish. So here we go. Well, Winnie, the weigh-in's well underway. Story's already emerging. Sad tales from Mikey Williams at the top end of the section uh, and the other one. So he's had a fish escape from his keep net, which was probably £10. Yeah. And what's happened? Basically, the fish has jumped out of his net really early on in the match, £10 fish. 
and he's missed out on the section and a thousand pound by two ounces devastated <laughs> you get the feeling oh. with this match that it's one of those that's going to be uh, slightly extraordinary john harvey weighing in now so mikey's compatriot he's had a few decent fish the word on the street is as we suspected it's probably between three people which we'll see first of all phil canning on this side and then of course des ship and also andy bennett but john harvey who's already had 35 in his first way is a bit of a late <laughs> contender isn't he now he was always like always likely to do that we saw him catching a few fish 24-3 was that that's, uh, that's straight away that's a lot more than we thought yeah, over this side, so. so that's 59, 59 pounds four. four. <laughs> that's what we're so really Clint Elliott calls 59 pounds four for John Harvey, which is a fantastic weight. Not really spoke about John all day. It was a peg everyone wanted, but he just snuck him in under the radar. I don't think it'll be enough, but I think they're admitting to more over the other side. But there's a lot more than we thought he had. Mr. Canning, sir, there's a rumour you might have a few. Talk us through it. No, I'm not sure about a few. Caught in the middle two hours. I haven't right. caught in the first hour. I haven't caught in the last hour. But the middle two hours have been pretty steady. Just catching Crasio, Shallow and a few F1s. And the last hour I've really struggled, really. really. What, are you, what are you guesstimating? Don't know. Come on, play the game, Phil. 45 to 50 pound, I reckon. Right, so John Winkup said when you did that, I've got to add 10 pound. Is that fair? <laughs> yeah, it might be... <laughs> no, I seriously, because it's been Carasios, I don't, I won't even count. Just, just we just don't know net. what they weigh, do they? No. They're little chunky things, and it's, it's gonna, I mean, it's gonna be fascinating. This is gonna be really close. Mm, I don't know. I was hoping to try and catch a car plate on. Hopefully, not sneak, sneak sixty odd pound, and but weren't to be. Scales are next door, matey. We'll find out in a couple of seconds. Thank you. Fingers crossed. Well, Winnie, here we are then. Peg nineteen. Yeah. Phil Canning, who's had. A superbly steady match and just has put a get together a really nice run of fish admitting to 50 you said add 10 it's not going to be far off is it I, yeah I think he's got about what he said to be fair he said 55 50 55 yeah that's about what I think that's, yeah so he, he actually told the truth yeah <laughs> that's unusual for a match angler uh, it's usually just a bit of uh, not wanting to overblow things but yeah Staring at the scales now, waiting for the call. Fifty-five seven. Fifty-five pounds seven for Phil Canning. So at the moment, John Harvey is winning the match with that fifty-nine pounds from just down the way on the section. Fifty-nine pounds four. Fifty-five pounds seven for Phil Canning. There are two people left to weigh in who will dictate where this fantastic title is going. We're at Dead Ship's Peg, and as usual. Chinese whispers flying up and down the bank. Des is saying 60, maybe 70. Andy Bennett saying possibly 70. We know they've got 59 pounds to beat. Can't call it. No. I can't call it. If I'd, if I'd really be put a hand on it, I'd say Des is going to just, just sneak it. It's a big net. 30, uh, 43.10. <laughs> Wow, Seven, so the total for Des Ship, who gets a fantastic round of applause, 78 pounds and seven ounces. Now, the one thing we've not spoken about today so far is if Des wins this, this is history in the Park Dean Resorts Masters because he was the first man to win this title twice, 2007 and 2011. Is he the first man to get an incredible hat trick? Well, Winnie, here we are, peg 46. Do you know, I love this. This is just one of the best bits of match fishing. When you get tight matches like this. You can feel it buzzing in there, like the excitement. Andy and thinks he hasn't got it, but... You get this silence, don't you, when, when the fish go in, like now, and they go on to the scales, and you get this silence. Mm. He's on about putting his second net on top, so no, it's not enough. No. See, I'm, I'm going to say that's not enough. No, not enough. I think Dead Ship's on it. I think Dead Ship... There's Des one, has his third. Look, there's a little smile on Des's face. <laughs> 57 pounds, four ounces well done, Andy. for Andy Bennett. Well done, Andy. And Des Ship, <laughs> I think he knows. He knows, Des knows. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Look at he that. He smiled, he's definitely mellowing in his old age. Isn't he? I don't think Smiling I've seen him smile, that's incredible. <laughs> What's that wind or something? Wow. <laughs> How are you then? I'm happy now. I'm happy now. I can't that 
bit of a tough sort of hour where I went on the pole and thought I'd catch and I didn't. You were cross, weren't you? I could see well, you were cross. I wasn't cross. cross, I just chilled out because I was catching some fish and just enjoying the day. Uh, but you always feel like, you know, when you've had a nice day like me, you always feel like you're in the race because you're getting bites, you know, and, and you know, it's, it sort of, it's worked out. So it's always good, isn't it? I, I needed that, Andy. I really needed that. I'm over the moon, to be honest. Why do you need it? Tell me why. I don't know. I just, as you get older, it gets less and less to win these sort of things, doesn't it? And uh, I'm no spring chicken anymore. And, you know, it's, it's just good, isn't it? Sort of, you know, a lot of pressure on me all the time. And it's just brilliant to, brilliant to win it. Just a little word about the people around you who've driven you onto this, because this competition gets stuff out of people that nothing else, there isn't another match like this. No, it's, it's, it's hard. It's, you know, being where I am, there is sometimes a lot of crassio in F1s in that roundy sort of, you know, away from the islands. So that's why I started on the method. But it's all gambles, you know, you, have a, you take a gamble here and a gamble there. And sometimes it bites you in the butt and sometimes it sort of, you know, works out for you. And luckily it's worked out. So, well, I'm not it? swimming. I'm not going for You're a not swim. Yes, you are. No, I'm not because yeah, my you back. Are. No, got a bad listen, back. I got a serious problem with this place. I done me back in in the water. I ain't going in. So uh, whatever whatever happens, I, even if John picks me up, I ain't going in. <laughs> Le Chameau proudly sponsors On The Bank.